Market. I'm Alex Coffey alongside Kevin Hanks. It's now time for our cash tag segment. Joining me here in studio is TD Ameritrade Network contributor Jenny Horn. And from likefolio.com, the co-founder Landon Swan is with us as well. Today, guys, we're talking Roku, a name that has really taken over this disruptive space of, of, of streaming, smart TVs, uh, software associated with our, with our viewing. And so uh, it's been uh, awesome to watch and they continue to dominate this space. I'm really interested to see what the data is. Yeah, and their price activity has been really interesting lately. Lower today ahead of their report today post-market. But what I thought was interesting actually is if you had held Roku for the last three years, you'd have a return of over 800%. And the stock has risen over 200% since the beginning of 2020. So a sizable return just in the last year. But you really, you know, what is interesting about this name is it hit all-time highs last Tuesday before then seeing a pretty de decent degree of selling. A huge part of this was actually a report that came out of Kathy Wood's ARK Invest when they sold more than a half a million shares since the beginning or end of June. So I, th I like that you all sort of mentioned Kathy Wood's ARK Invest on the previous segment with Uber because I like that Tom said that he doesn't really think this matters so much. And truthfully, I completely agree. But this news actually came as extra surprise because earlier this month, Kathy Wood actually said investors were making a huge mistake by selling these stay-at-home names like Roku. So what she said is she believes the coronavirus um, has really changed the world dramatically and permanently. And this has sort of been sentiment we've seen echoed throughout so many different sectors of the economy, one being these home furnishing stocks. We saw this from the Wayfair CEO. The other thing, the Clorox CEO said the same thing. Now, their earnings haven't exactly painted that picture, but so many analysts are wondering sort of how this stock Roku particularly can maintain these levels of growth, but it's actually so far proven that it can. As of the first quarter, which ended back in March, they had over 54 million accounts, and they said their streaming hours were up almost 50% year over year in the first quarter. So it's not only picking up new customers, but it's also continuing to sort of invest in its existing customers, which is something the street tends to typically very much like. Now, the concerns about this growth have sort of circulated. They're all over social media today, but so far, man, Management's outlook has actually proven otherwise. They've actually called for year-over-year -year revenue growth of over 70% for this second quarter. So if Roku is able to post over 70% revenue growth this quarter, followed by 50% revenue growth in the previous quarter, I would say that this is still, you know, a healthy name and one that shouldn't be discounted just because, say, we're returning to this new normal. But I actually liked that on Twitter today, I saw so many tweets comparing Roku to Netflix and some of these other streaming behemoths. And our first tweeter today sort of, you know, talks about that and this comparison that maybe we shouldn't be making. So our first tweeter today says, the problem with Wall Street analysts, experts, and media is that they misunderstand what business some companies are in. Roku is not a media company. They are not competing with Netflix or Disney or anyone else. They're a platform for consuming content, a very good one. So I liked this because, again, I always think that typically we make the comparison with Netflix, and I actually think Roku should be compared more with, say, an Apple TV, you know, just based off their business models. But our next tweeter talks about some of this price activity we're seeing heading into this report, which says, Roku earnings release after the close today. Today will mark the sixth day down in a row for Roku. Seldom does this happen like very. So what I thought was so critical about this tweet and why I wanted to show it is because this sort of thing actually happened pr prior to their first quarter report. And we did see a sizable gap down before then the stock sort of, you know, rebounded some of its losses. But Landon, heading into this report, we've had a few down days for Roku. It's down a little bit lower today, almost unchanged on the day. But I have to say the momentum on Twitter is still pretty positive. So I'm curious what your data is showing. Yeah, actually, so <clears throat> on the last time that that happened, when the, the stock sold off before the report, a lot of it had to do with the fact that Roku pulled YouTube TV, YouTube TV from their platform. Investors did not like that, obviously. Uh, but yeah, it, it, what's interesting is you talk about these comparisons. Uh, Roku is the platform, but they're also starting to blur that line a little bit in that they are getting more into content. They acquired uh, Quibit, I believe is how you pronounce it, uh, not too long ago, That and then rebranded 75 shows to be Roku Originals. So they're sort of getting into that space because advertising is where the big money is at. It's not the, it's not the devices or the TVs that they're selling that's making them the big money, even though that used to be it. it used to be about 90% of the revenue came from the devices or the TVs. Uh, now over two thirds is coming from advertising. Uh, but when you do compare to the traditional, I guess, the, the ones that are more like platforms or, or uh, uh, devices, the Apple TV and the Fire TV, you can see here on our scatter plot, 
Uh, Roku is doing fairly well. Apple TV is, is actually dominating. I think a lot of it has to do with Ted Lasso. Uh, they're getting a really good response from that. But you can actually watch Apple programs on Roku. So it's very hard to differentiate where that line should be drawn. But I agree, Roku, Netflix is not a valid comparison. Uh, the better that Netflix and Disney and those others do, the better that Roku will do. Uh, in fact, when uh, Verizon announced that you get a free subscription to Disney uh, last year, that was one of the biggest days for Roku purchase intent that we've ever seen. So these are all lifting Roku up. Uh, so we love that. Um, now, I will say that their user growth is slowing. That's what we've seen. We saw it last quarter. Uh, they reported the same thing. We're seeing it this quarter. So the, the growth and number of people that are joining is slowing, but the number of people watching, or I guess the number of hours watching is going up significantly. And that advertising revenue is continuing to increase. A couple of years ago, there was a massive gap between the number of hours streamed and the number of dollars on digital streaming advertising. I think it was a 10 to one gap where way more people are watching than the number of ads being served or the dollars being served. Uh, that gap is closing and the more that people get onto streaming, the more that gap will close and that's gonna be better for companies like Roku. Um, here you've got a chart of the Roku channel, which is where they're gonna get their advertising from. People talking about that. Uh, you can tell it's it's been on the uptrend, huge spike recently. They're doing very well. Um, they are, you know, in my opinion, this is a fantastic company. You think about, you know, who they're going up against. They're going up against Amazon, Google, Apple, and they are doing extremely well. Very small company years ago, and now they're a dominant player. So uh, long term, I love this company. I don't know what the reaction of this report is going to be. We're seeing users slowing down in growth. We're seeing hours going up, which means advertising is going up. So it's going to be all about what's important to, to investors. Uh, I'm really curious uh, just overall how this is going to play out. Right now, like Folio, earnings score is pretty neutral. Long term, love the company. In fact, we recommended it uh, back in uh, March of last year at about $90. So we've been bullish on this company for quite a while to our customers. Uh, so our, our clients are very happy up in the 400s, but it has been flat all year. So I think we're ready for the next leg up. One Godfather 2 and Ted Lasso. So I understand the Ted Lasso effect on Apple TV, but here's the thing. The the articles I read on Roku's growth, they're they're unbelievable. The numbers that they're putting up. Active accounts plus 39%. Average revenue per user up 24%. Gross margins 45%. Revenue 58%. I mean, expected revenue, 58%. These numbers are, they're putting up are crazy. Are you saying, uh, is your data saying that even though these numbers are impressive when you put them all together, that pace of growth is slowing there? Because, you know, this stock is almost 20% off its highs so w with you know you you look the past three quarters of earnings each quarter they're expected to lose each quarter they they were profitable so and jenny if, if you're comparing companies 132 million float on roku is extremely small for a company like this so there's a lot of really positive ways to look at this but are you saying the numbers that i'm i just uh, regurgitated there. Those numbers are slower than they were before. Well, so here's the thing. You've got to think about there's there's really two key factors here. One is how many people are buying a new device and becoming new users of Roku. And then the second is of the of the existing users, how much is content streaming going up or going down? How much more are they watching on Roku? Because as I talked about, the, the devices themselves, that's really just sort of an engine for the, the later revenue. Content and advertising is where Roku is now making its money. It's no longer a device platform only. Um, over two thirds of its revenue comes from of content advertising. So we look at those two numbers. The first one, we're saying that the people, the number of people who are buying new devices is slowing down. The growth is slowing. It's obviously going up, but the growth is slowing. So is that concerning for investors? Maybe, maybe not. But what we're seeing is that streaming, the number of hours that people are spending on Roku and the Roku channel specifically are both going up, which means more advertising dollars. If you think about last quarter, that was the far more important number because streaming hours went up about 32% year over year, but ad sales doubled. 
So if you only need a 32% increase to double your ad revenue and we're showing a significant increase in streaming hours, that could be very good because again, there's that huge gap between streaming hours and digital streaming advertising dollars being spent. That gap is closing, and as it closes, Roku's the beneficiary. So I'd love to see them gaining more users more quickly. That is slowing down. That's a concern. Uh, but the users that they have are watching more, and they're watching more original content, the things that drive ad revenue, which is really high, high margin stuff, and I think that's what's going to get investors excited. So, Landon, I think it's really interesting that you mentioned that devices aren't really their bread and butter anymore because that makes perfect sense to me. I bought a Roku TV like a million years ago, and I love it. I mean, I would say I would take to Twitter and tweet positively about it, but I'm not continuing you know, to buy more and more devices because one TV suffices. And I think a lot of people, I'm sure, are just like me. But what I see being a concern is now, you know, they're saying the majority of their revenue comes from ad spend and, you know, they're the users they're retaining. But isn't this a concern they're sort of entering this super saturated streaming space? Because, I mean, like, I know this is something we've talked about for years now, and it seems to be like we've always been proven wrong that there doesn't have to be one winner in the streaming space. But I just have to say that, you know, there are so many players now, especially after this last year. Yeah, I agree. I, you know, if, if <laughs> I, I would have ran it wrong. If Roku was my company, I would have focused on the devices. I would have stayed out of creating content. Uh, that's not what they did. I would have been wrong because they've proven that uh, device sales have been fairly flat over the last year or two, but uh, content and ads is where they're making money. So it's a tricky business to get into. You're going up against some behemoths with huge deep pockets, uh, but that's where the money's at. And they're proving that they've got the audience so why not monetize that audience? They've done a fantastic job of building a technology that people love that allows them to stream many, many different sources. Uh, you know, the Roku channel is, is probably 1% of their viewers. I mean, they've got so many things in there that they can watch. So you've got all these captivated eyes and they can throw up an ad on the right side of the Roku that, that drives you to a specific show or a specific app and you're gonna make money off of that. So when you've got that captivated audience, I think it makes sense now, obviously in hindsight, uh, makes sense to, to go for the bigger bucks. And, and yeah, they're, you know, they're stepping up, they're going against some uh, huge players with uh, deep pockets, but I think that's the next evolution of this company. And if they can prove that they're capable of doing that, which so far they've sort of shown a sliver of hope on that, I think that they can, then I think that's where the next leg up, this is a $400 per share company right now, I think you could see it going up much higher in the future if they're able to compete on that front as well. Landon, I like how you frame that as uh, you know, going for the bigger bucks because you know, maybe I could play uh, the hater for a second since everything's been kind of optimistic. This has been a company that I will completely agree with you that has executed phenomenally over the last decade as they've been slightly ahead of trends. They started with the, uh, you know, the box to make a non-smart TV a smart TV and they were able to pivot off that ahead of time before it was too late and, you know, left like a blockbuster in kind of a dying industry. And so, you know, are they just kind of telling us uh, that, you know, the big players like Apple and Amazon and LG or Samsung or whoever it may be, right now maybe they're lagging a little bit on user interface and, and intuitiveness that Roku has an advantage on. But these are, this is Apple. I mean, the iPhone's interface is one of the most beloved interfaces of, of all interfaces. And at some point, some of these companies are going to figure this out. And they're saying, you know, we don't necessarily have this strong moat in the device space forever. We have it right now. But at some point, we got to have a reason why someone wants our Roku app, why they want uh, our Roku folder. Because essentially, it's just a folder on your mobile device at, at some point. And if Ted Lasso's taught us anything, new content that excites people in a service they don't have, they will sign up for. Netflix is trying to keep you subscribed with its new content. Just takes one for Roku. Just hit it on one, and everyone's going to sign up. Yeah, I, I agree. But you also have to think back and think, okay, five years ago, who the heck is Roku, and how could they possibly compete with Amazon, uh, Apple, Google, those huge companies, and now they're the dominant player. So, you know, I'll, I'll give you an anecdotal thing. Like, we just bought a new TV for our guest room, 
And I specifically only looked at TVs that were Roku. There was Amazon Fire TVs and there was Google whatever TVs. I'm going for Roku because I know it's a good platform. Now, that puts them in the lead. They're the early leader, they're the, the fast mover. And so even though they're the tiny company, they have built an audience that says, you know what, I know how to use this interface. It's really awesome. It's, it, it's fantastic. I can find what I want. I can find new shows. So I'm going to stick with Roku. So now the, the uh, onus is on their competitors to come out and not only equal, but they have to go above and beyond to get people to switch. That's the early leader advantage. And Roku has established that, which is extremely impressive given their size just a few years ago. No, completely agree, and uh, I think they're, they're hoping they can continue to do that and then also bring that added benefit of a potentially a Roku channel as well. Landon, I'm excited for this report. We'll see what happens. $415 stock, as Kevin mentioned, about 20% off of its all-time highs. Have a great rest of your day, Landon. Thanks, as always, co-founder of likefolio.com. All right.